Hey yogis, I want to talk to you a little bit about the first of the four pillars of yoga. So I created the term the four pillars of yoga just to make it really simple and accessible uh, for the modern yogi to understand that there's so much more to yoga than just the body or just an asana practice. And actually, if we want to have a comprehensive yoga practice, we really have to be doing a little bit more than, than you know, just spending time on the mat doing the poses. That being said, still doing the poses and attending to your body is essential and really important. So this week on my uh, website, in my yoga membership, I launched a four week series on the four pillars of yoga and each Thursday I'm giving a lecture on each of these separate pillars. So the first one is, is the body and I did about a 45 minute lecture attending to exactly what I mean by that. So I just wanted to give you a little snippet of what that first pillar is. So obviously there's the asana practice, the postures. And if you look at really the context in which the postures were developed, Yes, they support the physical body. You are moving and using your body, but they weren't really developed as a means of becoming more flexible or stronger per se, but actually of getting the energy, prana in yoga terminology it's called, to flow through the whole body. So we're really moving the body in order to free up the energy flow, to make the energy channels, the nadis, um, you know, flush with clean, good prana, clean, good energy. So in a general sense, moving the body on a regular basis in all directions is key to your yoga practice. So for the modern yogi, you know, just a little bit of movement every single day is what we want. Some days, sure, you have a really big, deep two-hour practice or one-hour practice or you make it to a workshop or to the studio. Those practices can be deeper and more challenging. But to be realistic, you know, we can't necessarily do that every single day. We lead busy, active lives. So a little bit of physical movement, asana practice, on a daily basis is super helpful. And the key to that is, you know, not to do a butt kicking class every day, but to actually move the body in all directions, you know, to open, to strengthen, to twist, to forward bend, you know, to kind of get your body moving all around. Um, essentially, the idea being that the core of your body is nice and strong and that your limbs, you know, are flexible and and your joints are flexible and you're able to really move healthfully and functionally. So that's the first thing I would say about your yoga practice, your asana practice. Additionally, don't be afraid to have your practice change over time. I mean, we change, we go through cycles in a one day period, we go through big cycles seasonally, and we go through major life cycles. So the kind of yoga or the way that we're practicing, let's say in our 20s, should be different than how we're practicing in our 50s. The amount of time, the amount of intensity, etc. I mean, you know, what a, a 20 year old college student can do is radically different than a 30 year old mom can do. So don't think that your practice should be the same throughout the years, it should change as you change because you know the life that you're living is always changing. So that's, that, that's another big one. Allow your practice to change over time to meet you where you are for optimal you know, well-being and balance so that you can live your, your best life when you're not on your mat. We don't want the time on the mat to end up depleting you know, our energy resources and our, our physical bodies the rest of the day. And then the other key thing I want to share in this little snippet with you is additional exercise is fantastic. You don't have to only do yoga asana to take care of your body. And in fact, varying what you do is really healthy. You can vary it seasonally, and I go into much more detail in this lecture per seasons and doshas, but you know, again, changing up what you do, hiking, biking, swimming, skiing, skating, you know, all these different activities 
um, that use your body in different ways make for a balanced human being and it's also just fun you know to do different things to not always just be in the same track physically so those are some of the the generalized tips i would say for attending to the body again that lecture is going to have way more detail in it and this week the second one will be on the breath so the first pillar is the body second pillar is the breath it's called pranayama and the third pillar is attending to the mind, so powerful, meditation. And the fourth pillar is diet, you know, what we actually put into the body. So I hope this is helpful to you in a general way. And if you want more specifics and more details, it's not too late to sign up for the online workshop. If you can't make the sessions live, they're 6 p.m. Thursdays in April uh, Pacific time then they're recorded and posted so you can go back and watch them later. All right, yogis, let's take care of the physical body in a really healthy and, um, and balanced way. Namaste. Be well.